I'd never thought about climate change for a long time. But about in 2005, I went to a talk at the Hay Festival where they were discussing climate change and the implications for the future. And I began to realize this is getting quite serious. I could hear that companies were doing things. I mean, Avis, the car company, was trying to do something at the time and various other people. But I thought, what's society doing? Is anybody doing anything? practice permaculture principles. We work together in community to steward the land and to also integrate earth care, people care and fair share in a holistic journey with the land and the earth. <laughs> there's lots of people who have realised that there's a problem with the monetary system and want to make changes and a platform like uh, the Bristol Pound uh, allows you to start making changes. From my point of view as a chef, it's really amazing to be able to try and make a bit of a difference. The problem I sort of see with quite a lot of conventional uh, kitchens is the unsustainability of the food and the ingredients. The idea sort of came about about three or four years ago. Sarah came home one day and said, oh, have you read this paper by the UN um, urging us in the West to adopt entomophagy? And I asked, what is entomophagy? And it's basically, it's the practice of eating insects, especially by humans. The bug farm is really my way of, of trying to deliver change. So it's, yes, it's about bugs. It's about this hidden life in the undergrowth and the importance of this, this world that we, we don't really give much credit to because we generally can't see it. So we want to actually say, this is how you can support sustainable, efficient, modern agriculture that can feed a growing population but also look after our natural environment at the same time. Hi, I'm Estelle. I'm comms and media lead for Incredible Edible Trovedon. Um, we're all unpaid volunteers doing this in our own time, trying to make the world a kinder place for everybody in it. Furry, human, fishes, whatever bees and birds, we just want to make it a kinder place. We, we feel very strongly that people have been disconnected with their food and we thought there's got to be a different way. The brilliant thing about food is the membership, so we thought, great, it will reconnect people with each other, with the birds and the bees, with the soil, with science, with global warming, all of those issues can all be addressed through food. We're hardwired for beauty, we're hardwired to be kind, and we're hardwired to share stuff. Wait, should I go back? <laughs> hey guys, hope your trip's going well and that you find some great rocks to climb. Very sweet. So this article and thought of you and your project. It's all about a village in Cheshire that is becoming carbon neutral and trying to produce more energy than they use. It's not far from where you are, so maybe worth a stop on your travel. I'm Gary Charnock and uh, it was my idea to start the Ashton Hayes project. I think climate change has to be the whole of society, not just a small part of society. So my drive was to see if I could persuade an entire community to have a go. We had to produce a talk at the local school where we invited people to come and talk about being a carbon neutral village. And to our surprise, in a cold January night, minus two degrees, we got 600 people turning out. Because I didn't realise that there was such willingness. And everybody told us that they're coming because they didn't want to leave the problem for their children or the future generations. People who come here are in a frame of mind to learn. And, and that's what we want to do. We want to grab them and say, let's empower you. You can make a difference.